question. Congressman Garamendi represents the fourth district of third. Cal third, third, district. Me, third district of, of California, serving your fourth term. There we go. Right? There you go. <laughs> Getting it straight. Uh, the caller mentioned unions, and I want to yeah. uh, bounce this headline off of you. Wall Street Journal this morning: Unions flexing their muscles in a bid to stop the trade bill. Where do you stand on this trade promotion authority? The vote yeah. could happen this week. Trade promotion authority is an abdication of the congressional responsibility to enact trade legislation. It's up to us. Constitution is clear. It's up to the Congress to enact trade legislation. Trade promotion authority hands that negotiations over to the president and brings back to the Congress an up or down vote in which we have either accepted or rejected. Uh, I think it's dead wrong and I frankly I think that Trans-Pacific Partnership is a very very bad idea. Let's keep in mind that since the big free trade movement began beginning with NAFTA, World Trade Organization before that, but beginning with NAFTA we have lost over 8 million manufacturing jobs in the United States. We've basically seen as a result of these trade deals the flight of American capital to the lowest wage countries of the world leaving American workers behind. And I think it's time to stop that. I think it's time for us to have a fair trade deal, not a free trade deal. A deal in which, and I think this is where the TPP is going, in which American workers are going to have to compete against the Vietnamese worker who gets paid 50 cents, an, excuse me, 55 cents an hour. So what is going to happen? We're going to see American wages once again being held down as the American worker is forced to compete with the lowest wage workers in the world. The Washington Post editorial board disagrees. They have I been disagree with the editorial board. <laughs> I think they're dead wrong on this. I think they need to take a look at the economic statistics of this nation and what's happened to the middle class in America. Why is it that the middle class has stalled out? Why is it that we've seen uh, a situation in which the American worker is forced to compete against low-wage workers around the world. Oh, I know the econ economists will say eventually even out. It does by pulling down the American worker, but we've not seen the wages in those other countries rise, uh, rise significantly. You're a former rancher, California, big agriculture state. Yep. You don't see this as a benefit to agricultural exports. Well, I know what happens in California agriculture. It's like a chess game. This entire thing is like a chess game in which there are pawns on the table the rice industry, the wine industry, these are pawns. And in the game of chess, the first thing taken off the board are the pawns. And we're already beginning to see that. A lot of talk early on, oh, well, they're going to take care of California rice, they're going to open up the Japanese market. No, it's not happened. And at the end of the day, those very important specialty crops in California are going to get left behind. You take a look at the, uh, at the beef industry. Take a look at what really happened in the Korean trade agreement. That agreement allows beef to be imported to Korea and then brought into the United States from Korea without a tariff, without any limitations at all. So the American beef industry is left to compete with that. And many, many things. You've got to look at the details. The auto industry, how is it that the American automobile worker in the factories of the United States is now faced with a two-tiered wage system. Those who have worked there for years, they are able to maintain the previous middle income wages. New people coming in are forced to get, forced or paid at what amounts to just over a minimum wage. Hardly able to make it into the middle class, maybe the lowest level of the middle class. So you have a two-tier wage system. How did that happen? Take a look at the Korea trade deal. Korea, they're allowed to import well over a quarter million cars into the United States and we're allowed to ex export into Korea 25,000. Now there's a fair deal. I think not. 